So I think that one is but then I usually do that kind of like whatever they give us. Yeah. Two minutes. I'll spit it real treat. No, it's a bit. Hey, Ruben, do you know what the source, like, if, if I, do I, ah, there we go. Oh, yeah. This is your guys' rodeo, so I'll start whenever uh, you guys are wanting me to. Okay, I like that. Especially if people are military, that's meant to be a, a more of a starting on time. Mike, I don't know if you want to do the honors of doing a brief, like, hey, yeah. Let's go ahead and kick it off real quick. Uh, thank you all for kind of coming out. You know, I know this is real last minute, but a good friend of mine, uh, Jamie, decided that he might be able to make it up here and speak to everybody. Um, so, Jamie Miller is my personal communications coach. He has helped me secure a lot of new clients, as well as really reinforce uh, my relationship that I have with my current fiance in the past. <laughs> There's a little volatile right? at the beginning, right? But you know, over time, what we realize, guys, as, as entrepreneurs and just people, the better we can communicate, the more successful we can be, right? The more successful we can be with, potentially with our partner, with our business, with our clients, so forth and so on. And Jimmy has a, uh, an extremely impressive resume. He's taught alongside of some of the greatest, if you guys have ever heard of uh, Fortune Builders and Dan Merrill. He's spoken with a lot of those speakers there. He's helped tons of clients over at Edward Jones, tons of real estate agents at EXP, called Will Baker, and David, right? So we call him the communication coach. But without further ado, let's give a warm welcome for David. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks, mate. All right, guys. Okay, let me make sure. Okay. Okay. So, real quick, obviously, we can see the screen. That's great. Uh, I won't do a bunch of show of hand questions, all right? But just for just this one, how many of you, before I start teaching anything around communication, how many of you, like me, actually believe your ability to communicate is critical for what you do for a living? Great. Look around the room. Every hand was up, okay? Now, before I start teaching communication, what benefits would you guys come up with to be better in communication? So, what benefits do you get? to be better in communication. So to articulate your thoughts, it seems kind of like you're hopefully perceptive. Articulate your thoughts. OK, anyone else? What other benefits? Go ahead, Ruben. Clarity. Clarity. OK, any others? Having clarity is good. Go. OK, like that. Anyone else? Camille, how would you? Clarity. Okay. That's, okay. Would you would you agree with me? The better we are at communication, the more money you'll make in life. Is that is that a clear correlation between the two? Okay. Great. So look, reputation, trust, credibility, quality. These are all very important components. Now look, you're you're all here, intimate group. All right. I've got a few clients in this room. All right. Do you guys have complete faith in Mike that I must have these things? All right. Or do you have to know something about me to believe I've got these things? Complete faith in Mike, or do you have to know something? Know something. Uh, <laughs> now, 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 I feel now I feel like that know something was thrown out with some sarcasm, like, that, like, like, like. So, like, is it like, do you have faith in Mike, or you have to know something, and you actually? Gen 
Okay. Have you guys noticed so far, have I told you anything or have I just asked a few questions of you guys? I've just asked a few questions of you guys, all right? So look, since Camille said I have to know something, which is fine, it means I'll share. If, if you guys said, no, I've got complete faith in Mike, here's what I do. That means I don't need to share. This is what my phone looks like at the end of an Edward Jones virtual talk, where my phone number blows up with random text messages. Jamie, that was amazing. I want your help, OK? This is EXP alone, all right? This is just my EXP client. It's not Coldwell Banker, but every one of them's got a smiley face. You might notice Yesenia there, Mike Glassby there. Uh, you'll notice Kimberly, all right? Even help. All right, she has, Kimberly wanted three smiley faces after her name, so I went ahead and did that. Uh, Lingo is somewhere in here. And the reason I mentioned Lingo, oh no, Lingo is standalone because when Lingo, I actually introduced Lingo, who's here, to EXP, funny enough. He was with Century 21 beforehand. I feel like I just committed blasphemy saying that here. All right. Uh, I saw that Ruben did a post the other day that out the top 10, two of the people in that group are my clients. All right. And they're in this room. Now, the fact that I've just shared that, would that give you some sense of, I might know how to communicate and help people. Are we good? Great. That means I don't need to share Lingo's video of how I helped him out. All right? I don't need to share Coldwell Banker, where I helped a client make 480 grand last year. She's Swiss. She doesn't get understood too well. All right? And I taught her how to build rapport. There's no volume, but that's OK. And I'll make it a first lesson for you guys. Am I oversharing? The most amateur move that most people do is the overshare. My, my clients, if I ask them on the first, first session, what do you, here's thousands of dollars. What, I'm like, what do you know about me? They're like, I don't. I'm like, there's an there's a important component to that. When you're in front of a client, who should do all the talking, you or the client? The client. The client. If I can teach you guys a one-off question today that you can ask your clients and they start selling themselves on what it is that you do without you telling them anything, who would love to learn that question? I, pro I promise you I'll teach you that today. Now, when it comes to the overshare, if you're starting your conversation with a client, and realtors do this a lot, I have my standard listing presentation. And it starts like something like this. Hey, let me just start by telling you a bit about myself and a bit about how our brokerage works so I can sell your home. EXP, you might be like, let me tell you all about EXP and all the wonderful different ways. I, I, I love the nod of the head. No, I'm not doing that. But you know, it's something that goes on a lot out there. So the idea is, let's not overshare. We want the client doing all the talking. Now, I'm 46 almost this uh, in June, right? Does anyone, the question, does anyone not know what movie this is? What is going on here in this scene? What is this referring to? Anybody know this? Wax on, wax off. Okay. And when Daniel's being taught wax on, wax off, can you remember he's like, Mr. Miyagi, what has that got to do with karate? By the end of the movie, did it have everything to do with karate? So over the next 40 minutes, you guys are going to have a bunch of wax on, wax off moments. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to show you how I get my kids to do the things that I want them to do without telling them to do it. All right. I might even share how I helped a male client of mine get a date online on Bumble without the guy telling the girl anything about himself. Usually, if you're single in the room, you'll take a snapshot of that slide. All right, is what will happen. But can we understand communication doesn't just affect realtors, real estate investors, it affects everyone and all walks of life. Mike just said it helps him in his relationship with Senia. Uh, one of my, my most fulfilling things over the last four years I've done is last Christmas. December 23rd, I got a client saying, Jamie, I need some help with a real personal situation. The mother of my child won't let me spend Christmas with my child. And I said, what were you going to send? And he read it. I said, yeah, don't send that. All right. And I helped him formulate a question that she'd have to be evil not to uh, allow him to spend Christmas with his daughter. I got back from my trip in Ecuador. And I said, well, he goes, because of you, I got to spend Christmas with my daughter. So just understand the same verbiage that I'm going to be teaching, that telling you about my kids is the same verbiage that you're going to be using to bring on clients, all right? So that's the, I promise you, you, have, you won't have to be like, Jamie, we're realtors. What has this got to do with us? It'll be very clear for you. Now, you can probably tell I have an accent. I've been told that I'm very, like, charming, debonair. I've been told I can curse. It sounds polite. I won't do that here today. All right, I am now a proud American. All right, Mike, what vehicle do I drive to prove it? 
Yeah, oh yeah, I'm a truck. I'm a truck guy. All right. Now it's not turned me into Captain America just yet, and the reason I share that. Can you just all understand? It is impossible for me to teach everything that you're going to face in 40 minutes. That's all right. Now I can never do this lesson justice. The only people not allowed to answer this are clients. All right, you're not allowed to answer. I get better in selling and communication because I teach this stuff. All right. Let's say I teach you something here today, and let's say you take some notes. All right, or you, if in a one-word response, everyone. You want to get better at something that I teach you today? What should you do in order to get better at it? Okay. Well, I just proved a really important point, and I said I can't do the slide justice. If you played back the tape, I clearly said these words. I even stress on the word. I get better because I teach. And then I asked you guys, what should you do to get better? And you all said practice. And here's what's happening: you're not hearing what your clients are saying, and they're not hearing what you're saying. Now, this young lady here, what's your name? Jennifer might turn around and say, no, I'm not doing this, but I've heard enough EXP agents say this to another agent from another brokerage. We're not going to try and recruit you. All right. My biggest client, Edward Jones, came on board because the, the guy first said to me, I'm not going to try and sell you something. When someone says, I'm not here to sell you something, what do you hear them saying to you? I'm about to sell you something. So the words we use are not what, again, I can't do justice to this slide. If you want, we want the client doing all the talking. If you gather information from another human being, you then get to leverage that information back. And that's what makes your sale way easier to do. But the most critical component is you have to listen to what's saying so you can then leverage that back. And most people don't do that at a high enough level. In sales, it's one area in my life where I'm okay because I'm just going to ask questions of someone where I get them to tell me, they'll tell them all the glorious reasons why they want me in their life. Right? And I, there's a reason I use the word want because then I get to just get them to elaborate and elaborate and elaborate and get them to what I call an emotional state over it. You guys are doing a very emotional sale and a lot of realtors I find you make it too logical. Now, building rapport. Who would say building rapport? You've heard of it. It's very important, right? What would you, how would you define building rapport? So what's your name, madam? Rebecca. Rebecca? So Rebecca, how would you define building rapport? Building relationship. Anybody else? Jennifer? Building trust. All right. Okay. Like it. What's your name? John. John. Okay. So watch this. Look, the way I teach is never to say it's this way or the highway. It's more about... If I share something that makes sense to you, you'll implement it, all right? People only buy from people they feel the same as, all right? They won't buy from someone they feel completely different from. Now, watch this. No one ever remembers. Do any of you remember the first question that came out of my mouth that got every hand raised? And the good news is this. When you start doing this, your clients aren't going to know, oh, this is why you're doing it. They're not going to know. Does anyone remember the first question? Go ahead, Ruben. No. 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 Okay. So what? So no, Kim. Uh, 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 no way. Go ahead, Ruben. Okay. That, <laughs> technically, in a funny kind of way, but there was official. I always make it a first official question. All right, because it's building rapport. It's making everyone the same as me. Go ahead. Okay, that was my third question. All right, true story, that was my third question. So my first question to you guys was this. I use these three words. You don't have to use the same three words. You don't even have to have a British accent to do this, all right, just so you know. I use these words on purpose. You like me. John, you're right. It's finding a connection. People buy from people the same. So I just have to make you the same. The way I do it consciously in communication is, are you like me in believing? How many of you like me believe communication, the ability to communicate is critical for what you do for a living? Show of hands. Every hand goes up. doesn't matter what your background is. You're the same as me. If you don't know someone, I could go, Kimberly, are you like, well, I know Kimberly. Mate, what's your name? Court. 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 Are you like me? Do you value honesty? I've never had someone say no lie right to my face. It's not happened. Okay. If I say, Reuben, are you like me? Do you value your time? Yes. yes. 
that's a good one to use, by the way, when you're going to try and set up a meeting with a, when you're at the listing to create, to help build the urgency. Now, just understand, the, the first question I ever asked uh, Lingo, who's here, he is in Orlando. I met Lingo in the gym. Just so you know, I practice what I preach. First question I ever asked him was, are you like me? Do you like to have fun when you're in this place? And he goes, yeah, man. And then I did this thing where I read his mind. Maybe here today, I might read one of your guys' minds, all right, and have some fun with that. I get called uh, British Jesus in the prison that I volunteer at because I'm in their chapel in Orlando when I do that. Um, now, how many of you want to bring on a listing in one listing, one meeting? You want to bring a client to one meeting? The rapport build, there's no script, by the way. In real estate industry, you're given scripts a lot, right? There is no script. There's a framework. And it starts with the building rapport. The more specific that you get with your building of rapport, the more likely you can create a, a meeting, one meeting. I go with communication because that's what I am. But you would go, hey, are you like me in understanding not every realtor is created equally? All right, it's a good starting point. It's more specific to what you're bringing to the table. And when they agree with you on that, now you won't, you're less likely to get them saying, will you do it for less commission? Because you started on the rapport build that you're not all created equally for, for as an example. Now, the next slide is what takes it to a higher level. This is what will take your income and triple it. All right. True story. How many of you have ever heard of mirroring? All right. It sounded like someone was okay. People know to mirror, but they don't mirror at this level. All right. One thing, if any of you are ever relying on cold calls or you're calling up someone you've never spoken to before, first tip that you won't usually do, wait for them to answer the phone first, how they answer it, and then respond back to them with the same verbiage. All right. Don't go to a place of being uncomfortable, but if they go, hello, say hello. If they say hi, say hi. Be particularly listening to their names. I can't tell you how many times someone calls me up and they'll go, hi, this is Jamie. And they go, hey, is James there? I'm like, oh my God, I just gave you like the alley-oop of like, like if you're paying attention to what I like to go by. This is an extreme example of it, but Monica here goes, good afternoon, exclamation mark, space, upside down, question mark. Her ending was upside down, question mark, thank you, period, upside down, question mark. I had to Google how to do an upside down question mark, but she said, good afternoon. I said, good afternoon, exclamation mark, space, upside down, question mark. Right. What will happen is subliminally, the person in front of you will feel like, I don't know why, but this person gets me more than other people. All right. And that's how you're building rapport. And that's what will take you from one out of 10 connection to three or four out of 10 connection. Is that new for any of you? Like so far, any of you had a boom moment there with that? You have? Great. All right. Now, those are not my kids. They just don't look very happy. All right. When I Google image, unhappy looking kids. How many of you like me have kids? Okay. So watch this. My belief is you can't be a ninja in your communication at home, right? Or a, an amateur at home in communication and suddenly become a, a, a great professional in your professional life in communication. How many of you ever wanted to feed your kids vegetables and something healthy, all right? And you've asked, that if you're asking these two questions, this is where it can be better for you. I'm all about the outcome, all right, first. I go into every interaction, focus on the outcome before I go into the interaction. And all I want to say are the words, I agree with you. Every interaction I go into, I'm going to end with, I agree with you, meaning I've made it the other person's idea, all right? You can't do that if you've got vegetables in front of your kids and you say, how do you know you don't like it? They're going to say, I just know. Have you ever tried it? No. You're no closer to saying, I, I agree with you. So here's what I do. I would say, kids, do you think I feed you healthy because I don't care about you or because I really care about you? It's a multiple choice question. They're the best ways to steer a conversation. They go, because you care. I'm like, so what benefits would you come up with for trying the broccoli? And they might say, I don't know. And then I would say, well, I remember in school, you learned something about eating greens. You remember the benefits of eating greens? She's like my daughter, Ruby. No, I, I don't. I'm like, Alexa, because I know they won't listen to me. What are the benefits of eating uh, greens? And now Alexa will go off on a tangent and it'll go something about the brain. I'll be like, Ruby, did any of those things stick out for you? She goes, the thing about the brain, dad. And then I'll go, why that? Now Ruby is telling me all the reasons she wants a great brain. And then I'll say, 
now what are your thoughts? She goes, I should probably try it. And I say, I agree with you. Can you guys see that's a lot more sophisticated play? It's like when, you're going to see where I'm going to share with you uh, a situation you face as realtors or real estate investors. And the main reason that realtors hire me is based on you guys asking the worst question at the worst moment of a person. And you don't realize where you're steering the conversation as a result of that. This is a guy you want to stay away from being. And it's tough in your industry. The LA fitness sales guy. All right. I used to go up to them at the end of a workout because EXP is not the only brokerage in the world, all right? You've now got a, a company that's trying to imitate it, which is a great form of flattery called LPT that I've got uh, some clients with in Orlando. But, and, and I'm actually doing a training for their coaches council on how to have conversations with the agents that are saying they might want to leave. And I, I promise you, the other day, I heard someone doing the LA Fitness play. The LA Fitness play was this. I'm like, I'm thinking of checking out Planet Fitness down the street. And here's what LA Fitness guy says. Oh, they don't have the swimming pool. They don't have the basketball court. They don't have the racquetball court. They don't have the aerobics room with the punching bag. Ruben and I talk about punching bag. Okay. I say to them, well, now you've got me thinking I'm paying too much money for my membership here. Why would I think I'm paying too much money for my membership based on what the LA Fitness guy just said to me? I don't use, I don't use one of those things. It's irrelevant. So when I know, you might have heard of her name. Her name's Julie Ma, all right? She is a big shot in the Global Alliance, which is part of the Honey Badgers, which is uh, part of Gil Ramos and Bobby uh, Davidovitz's uh, team. She had 260 grand in stock with EXP that she didn't even know about. She had to get told about it. I'll let that sink in. She had 260 grand in stocks that she had to get told that she had it, meaning how I many you realize there are lots of EXP agents who have got tons of stock and they don't even know about it, meaning meaning they don't care. So if you go and tell someone, you can make money doing stocks, you're being LA fitness guy. That's not what you, you're you're right. It's like they, we're not going to try and recruit you kind of scenario. The way to sell EXP is to ask someone, what do you value? What would you benefit from as a result of? And you'll have a much more better conversation with that person. Now, women love this. It's, I, it's my truth, all right? Women are better salespeople than men, all right? I don't know about uh, for your guys' office locally, but in the Global Alliance group in Orlando, where I coach in Inspiration Hall, every year they have the awards at the beginning of the year. In the last two years running, four women are the top salespeople in that, in that room, year on year. Is it the same pretty much up here? Like, right. I'm probably going to repeat this twice, all right, to make an effect, a, a bigger effect for you guys. People, everyone, everyone in the world does things on emotions first. They justify it with logic afterwards. We do things on emotions first. We justify it with logic afterwards. You guys are doing the most emotional sale on the planet. Buying a home is the most emotional sale on the planet. Too many realtors make it logical. If someone asks you, are there any homes that are four bedroom, two bathroom in this community? If you say, yes, there are, let me show you all of them, right? You've made it logic. And then you don't understand why they didn't go with you because you're, you're like, they asked me this and I told them this. Notice the word, I told them this. Well, you're better off doing, yes, there are, just out of curiosity, if there's only one of you, why four bedrooms? And now they're going off on a tangent and it's a completely different outcome that you're going to have and they're going to end up getting you more referrals in life because you're going to show that you have more care all right, about things. Now, I didn't learn this till I was 29 years of age, all right? So I didn't come out of my mum's womb knowing this. This is what changed the goalpost. Have any of you learned, and I'm betting you have, whoever asks questions steers the conversation. You've all learned it. All right. So now I get to ask you. So Jennifer, is it? If I come up to you networking, and it doesn't have EXP, it just says Jennifer, all right? And... You've asked me what I do because you're a class act and you made it about me first. And then I turn around, which I wouldn't let happen. But let's say you did. I turn around to you and go, what do you do for a living? What is your response? I help people buy and sell homes. Okay. Uh, madam, what's your name? Nikita. Nikita. Okay. And what would you say if I came up to you and said, what do you do? I'm an agent. Okay. Ruben's a good sport in this room. Ruben, I come up to you. Oh, you. <laughs> I called you. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Camille, if I came up to you and said, what do you do? What would you respond? I help people discuss properties and help people get houses. 
Right. I make I, the reason the reason I do this, by the way, there's a method to my madness. You've all been taught whoever asks questions steers a conversation. Yet someone asks you the most glamorous question on the planet that you can actually get business from, and all of you made the statement. I'm just going to let that sit with you guys. You're being asked a question, and you would decide to go with a statement. If Nikita goes, she's an agent. Well, I, I've had realtors say, I help people build generational wealth. I'm like, have you actually done that? And they're like, no, I just think it sounds very professional <laughs> to say it. Guys, it, there's, some, there's an expression I use a lot that my clients love where I say, I help you sell the right thing at the right time. If you're going networking, you're spending one commodity time, you're not going to get back, right? You, like me, you'll value your time. To go along, I've got my spiel. If you say something like, I'm a realtor, how many thousands of realtors are there within a small parameter of you? You're not separating yourself from anybody else. You know, look, Jennifer, I, I picked on Jennifer first there because Jennifer, you've got the tattoo, you've got like, you put together. If she just says, I'm a realtor, they're all the miscellaneous ingredients that you go into putting yourself together completely are negated and make you just like everybody else because you say, I'm a realtor, I help people find their dream homes or whatever it might be, but you're making a statement. All right? And that's why I always is, uh, you could imagine if you're me and you teach, ask questions and people said they've learned it, you've been given the keys to the Ferrari, but you decided to leave it parked under a, a sheet all right, for yourselves rather than using it as a skill set. There are really good questions, there are really bad questions. Right, here's a bad question that you don't want to ask. It's not that you don't care about people, but if you've never spoken to someone before, you do not want to be asking, how are you? If you call me up and go, how are you? All right, I'm going to say, first off, do you really care? And you're going to say yes. And then I'm going to say, well, in that case, I woke up at 6.02. Yeah, I think 6.02. I took my dog out. He was not as regular as he usually is, all right? <laughs> And I'm going to go off on a complete tangent. Why? It's not, don't beat yourself up if you do ask it. You're programmed to ask it. Some of you will text me and I'll call you later on today and you'll say, how are you? It will just happen and I, we will chuckle about it. It's almost a predictability factor. And that's another component. If you can do things with predictability and you know it works every time, do it. Whenever I say I drive a truck, everyone laughs. I know what I'm going to get as a reaction, all right? If someone goes to me, what do you do for a living? The first thing out of my mouth, Oh, that's an interesting question. They're going to smile. I'm building up some intrigue. I'm not just going with an I statement because I'm looking to build up some intrigue. If you're networking, the only thing you're selling is, can I get this person to want to meet with me in the near future? If I can't get the person to want to meet with me, it's an irrelevant minute and 15 seconds of your life. How are you? Don't beat yourself up, but just realize they're going to most likely say good, right? But you're not getting yourself to the outcome that you want by asking it. Now, a big one in South, I was just in South Florida and I help a lot of luxury listing agents with Colwell Banker in South Florida. And here's what they hear a lot. The sellers, a big problem they're facing, sellers saying, I think my home is worth X, all right? Does that happen in, uh, okay, yes, okay. What is the one question you ask when someone says to you, I think my home is worth X, what does every realtor on the planet, what do you ask the seller at that moment in time? Did you go to Zillow? Yeah, okay. Or what's another qu like way of the... How did you get that number? Yeah. Okay. Every realtor, how did you come... Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this sit in your minds for just a moment. All right, let's just sit on this for a second. Who is the expert, you or the seller? You, okay. You're asking someone who's not the expert, how did you come up with your price? Which means you now have to what? Listen. You have to listen to them go off on a tangent about stuff that's tied to some emotional debt of credit card they want to get paid off or something completely random that's got nothing to do with the factual nature. And truth, if you're doing your job right, have you gone there with already having some kind of knowledge on what the price of the house is? Especially as a real estate investor, you've got a uh, notion. The reason real estate, some real estate investors hire me because in their scripts, before they call up someone, they ask someone, what do you think your home is worth? And it's like Noah Harris was just like, that's the work. I'm like, Noah, you're asking a, a question that's going to hurt your chances. Because if you don't agree, which you most likely won't, last time I checked, the non-agreement is a, a battle. So can you see that's a terrible question to ask someone? Does that make sense? Like just to think of a different level? Oh, before I share the next slide, 
all right? If you're a fella and you're single, you'll definitely probably take a snapshot, all right? But I'm going to share with you three questions that you can get someone to an emotional state and pretty much do what you want them to do, all right? Have any of you ever heard of what, why, how? Right, you have, okay? Who hasn't learned to, uh, what, why, how? Okay, so... Uh, John, are you, would you say if there was one thing, you're in here, so naturally, is it safe to think for me that you do care about personal development and getting better? Okay. So what is one thing in this world that you haven't achieved yet that you would be devastated? Now, if you've got kids, it might be leave a legacy. It could be travel somewhere. What would one thing be you'd be devastated if you weren't to achieve it in life? Only one thing. The house of your dreams. Okay. It could be anything. I had a woman last week in Utah say, play a piano. Like, it can be anything. All right. So, why did you pick that as your one thing? Because it influences a lot of other things I think are important. Can you elaborate on that? I've been saying peace is a very peace is my most favorite word on the planet at the moment to have peace in life so look how would you feel if in the next year or so you are living in your dream home to be able to create those kind of memories have that peace how would you describe how that would make you feel way ahead of schedule okay way ahead of schedule okay look I tell you what let's do the alternative how would you feel if you get to your deathbed and you didn't ever achieve the dream home all right, you didn't get anywhere close to it, all right? And you didn't have that piece. How would you how would you feel then? Devastated. Devastated. Now, it sounds like you're pretty serious about this in your life. What value would you place on getting there? A really low one or that's a pretty high value? Okay. Watch this. Has he done all the talking? All right, and all I've done have I watch where I could technically take it. Do you believe your ability to communicate to go and earn money? will help you tremendously on that journey to achieve that home. Okay, have you learned anything from me yet that you didn't know? Yes. Okay, do you see where I'm going? Have I shared what the investment is into me? No, but I've got him to a place where if he's really serious, all right, you guys can just do what, why, how on, on clients. It's interesting, I'm so happy to hear John go, one thing. Everyone in the world, you just have to find the one thing they value. All right, if you want to sell someone in one meeting, Ask them one thing. Don't ask them several things, all right? I drive a truck. There are some people in this room who might know why I drive a truck. Do you remember? Why do I drive a truck? What's the one reason that I drive a truck? Do you remember? Well, no. It's to feel like a... No, it's true, sorry. To feel like a man. True. Like, I pulled up to a traffic light in a Volkswagen CC, and I saw this big fellow with his arm out the window. I'm like, I want to feel like that guy does. When I went to a truck dealership, I went on a test drive. Thankfully, the guy who sold me the truck is a friend of mine, so he, he was pretty savvy enough to say this. We go on the test drive, we get back to the lot, he goes, well, does this truck make you feel like a man? I'm like, does it? <laughs> but watch this, here's what he didn't do. Oh, by the way, this truck has this feature and this feature and this feature, because here's what human psychology will then do. Oh, uh, Ryan, do you have a truck on the lot that will make me feel like a man that doesn't have those things that I can get for cheaper? Every time you think you're sharing something that someone should value, it's an irrelevant conversation. You're hurting your chances. You can charge 8% commission all day long, finding out the one thing they value more than anything in the world. And if you sell on the one thing, that's why it's good. Thank you for stressing that. I didn't know if I was going to teach necessarily that component. But the idea is what, why, how it works in all walks of life. If you could pick one characteristic that you want when choosing to go on a date with someone, what would it be? My client, go, uh, she said chivalry. So I helped my client go, I believe chivalry is important. Why did you pick that characteristic? She goes, it shows you how someone will treat you. And frankly, there are not too many men with that characteristic. So my client goes, so if I'm able to illustrate chivalry is important in the way that I treat someone, would you be up for meeting up? Clear question. Would that feel like you've met someone rare? She goes, I like the response. The answer is yes. So my client got a date without telling them anything about himself. Can you see that you guys can do this as realtors with your clients or whatever? If you're trying to recruit, what would one thing be that you would value about joining EXP? If you're looking to grow a, t a team, let them talk. All right. Uh, you don't have to have a British accent to use what, why, how. Jim Roman is a business coach. He used it. Guess what I did to close the deal, how I did it. Trust me when I say awesome experience. 
Who would get excited to learn the one-off question that you can ask someone they start selling themselves, you don't tell them anything? Does anyone remember the second question that came out of my mouth? <laughs> That's the great thing. Like, no one ever does. And so your clients aren't going to know what you're doing. All they said to you guys is, hey, before I start teaching, what benefits would you come up with to be better in your communication? Some of you said clarity. I can then get you to elaborate on that for me. And then like, da 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 right, I'm starting off on a foot of getting the person talking. All right, rather than the, let me start by telling you about myself. Hey, before I even do that, what benefits? And watch this. I know uh, a client of mine in Colombia called Eileen Looney. Do you know the, uh, do you say might you might have heard of, okay. She went, went in the rehabbing space. She was rehabbing. She wanted a contractor as a refer. And so she got a referral contractor from someone who was uh, very successful at rehabbing. The contractor came and met with Eileen. Eileen did not hire them because she said the guy just spoke and spoke and talked and talked and talked. Have you ever seen someone talk themselves out of a sale? I said, if he would have turned around and done the play that I did at the beginning, hey, since I'm good enough for them, am I good enough for you? She goes, I would have hired him on the spot so the one of question is if you ask someone before look sometimes some people have done research before i share about myself what benefits you come up with they can throw so many random things at, oh you're not aware of this the jones is down the street they already told us all about you all right and we're you can be like oh so you're already confident that i can achieve x yes and you've got the business before you even go in the door truth any one of you that looks to become a client of mine becomes a client of mine the minute Mike opens his mouth up if you respect Mike. Do you understand? Like if I, if you respect Ruben's posts on social media that uh, out of the top 10, like and two of them, where I say the sale's done, you're already sold on the notion this guy must know what he's talking about if they're gonna have him come along and do this. Some of you have gathered information before you go into a meeting. You don't even realize that you've gathered the information to help you sell someone. I'll give you an example. They could be holding a Starbucks cup. What are they telling you? They spend money on coffee. So you can't say, so you can leverage those kind of things when they say, I don't know if we can afford this. Well, I think you can. All right. And then you go, you know, and then you'll use words that are positive connotation. So you want it, you just make sure it's financially feasible. The second you say the word feasible, it plants in the head, they say, yes, great, let's get creative. You guys are doing sales that give someone 30 years to pay off something. So feasibility becomes a lot easier for you. Just so you know, this was me on the left. I got a young lady five years ago to drive from Columbia to Greenville just by texting. What would you say the benefits would be for you to come and see me if you could share? She lists off five things. And I said, I agree with everything you just shared. The right hand side was a male client of mine. He asked the same question. The young lady wrote an entire essay of benefits to go on a date with him. All right, what I didn't do on here is say, I'm British, I'm pretty charming, I'll take you out for a fancy dinner. I didn't go with the, uh, I'm gonna throw a bunch of statements and hope and cross my fingers that this is going to resonate with someone. This is one of the hardest things, this is my least favorite slide of all time to share with people, all right? And people look at me like, why would it be my least favorite? I, no one can teach this. I can't teach you to have authenticity. What I can tell you is a problem in the realtor space, even in, and, and this is EXP offices across the country, is you're being told be authentic and then the very next breath, you're being saying, here's a script, all right? It's like, be authentic, here's a script, here's a script, now you're all being the same. Everyone in Inspiration Hall is being told to say, if someone asks, what do you do? You say, I'm in the real estate business, all right? And that's a carte blanche statement. If everyone's saying that and they're all at the same network meeting, now there's no differentiation from anybody else. So authenticity is not starting your phone calls with someone, hi, this is so-and-so with uh, so-and-so. And just so you know, I'm not saying don't declare who you are. And I know some realtors are saying, we have to say who we are. No one on the other end has got a stopwatch saying, this person did not say this within 30 seconds to me. There's just better plays you can do. Think about this, when someone calls you up cold and says, hi, this is so-and-so with so-and-so, what's the first thing you typically wanna do? Right. Click. So there's nothing that's gonna make you more glorious when you're doing it. Even though you might, you should believe in EXP, you should believe in yourselves, but it's not gonna come across even in your tonality to the other person, the other end of the phone. 
this is where I help people out the most. This is where my clients reach out the most to me is, Jamie, I've got this email. Or, Jamie, I've got this meeting. How well, at the pep talk. If you're sending an email, I'll make it simple for you. If you're sending an email, the only thing you're selling is a phone call. All right? If you're on the phone with someone, the only thing your phone is uh, selling is a meeting. That is it. How many of you, like me, do not like long phone calls with people you've never spoken to before? 90% of your scripts in discovery are not selling a meeting. All right? You should flip it. You want to make it 90% about selling the meeting, getting the meeting. Because I've been in offices where they're like, oh, my God, Jamie, I had the most amazing 45-minute phone conversation. I'm like, did you get the meeting? And they're like, no. I'm like, you just had a really friendly person on the phone. If your whole day is mapped out with 45-minute phone conversations like that, you don't get the meeting. You're not going on vacations. You're not doing the dream home scenario. So who could understand if your communication was better just in the skill set if you spend hours of your life in a cubicle doing calls? That can make a dramatic uh, difference for you. If you're saying these words, all right, watch this. The only time you'll ever hear me say these words is when I'm teaching people never to say them, all right? I want. And, and I haven't looked at any of your emails. I haven't heard any of your calls. But if you're saying at the end of a call, I would like the opportunity to speak with you or meet with you, the simple words, my daughter came up to me at eight years of age, all right? She, my daughter, my pride and joy. She goes, Dad, I want a cell phone. And to my daughter, who I love dearly, I said, no, your brother didn't get one till he was 12. All right, watch this. This is the difference in communication. What if my daughter, eight, came up to me and said, Dad, do you care about my safety? Do you understand? Do you see the difference? All right, Dad, Dad, I want a cell phone. No, you're not getting one. Dad, do you care about my safety? What if I go, yes, honey? And then she goes, what, do you, what why house me? Why do you care about my safety? I'll kill someone if they mess with you. You're my unicorn princess. Well, how would it feel to know my whereabouts? I'm safe at all times. I'm like, ah, very clever, Ruby. You're not getting yourself Now, that's an objection, right? Like, that's an object. Okay, what if she goes, I'm confused? Uh -huh. Like, well, you said you care about my safety, and there's this strange man at the school, and he was freaking my friends and I out. Who can clearly see my daughter's getting a cell phone? Different outcome. All right, just what... Remove the words I want from your vocab. Why? Because if you're saying I want, is there any emphasis on the other person? Do you see how the difference is All right, in that regard? Now, with networking, we'll have a bit of fun here. If I was a realtor networking, I wanted to bring my glorious personality to the actual table, I would have a bit of fun with it. All right? Just go with me on this. Who's seen the movie Taken with Liam Neeson? Who has seen that? Okay. So, um, Jennifer, you go, we're going to role play this. Just go, Jamie, what? I'm, you just seem like good sport and you were doing the head movement. You know what's interesting? As you were doing the head movement earlier, I was thinking, I, I didn't know if I was going to teach this today, but you can control. I got hired by the fraudulent examiners. Mara Ballard uh, had me come up and speak to the fraudulent examiners of South Carolina to do uh, witness confessions using body language. All right. And body language is important. But you can literally get someone to control, you can control someone in their body language. Uh, what was your name again? Carissa. Carissa, um, communication, the things I've taught today, they're very important, right? All right. Okay. All right. The only person who ruined it for us was Bill Clinton, because he goes, I did not have sex with that woman. All right. If someone ever goes, I did not, all right, they're lying right to your face, just for the reference. Okay. But so, Jennifer, just say, Jamie, what do you do? Oh, I tell you what, that's an interesting, that's an interesting question. A client of mine the other day gave me the biggest compliment on the planet. Couldn't believe it. Have you seen the movie Taken? Yeah. Do you remember the scene? He said, I remind him when Liam Neeson's on the phone, he goes, I've got a particular set of skills and I will find you. My client says, I'm like that finding real estate deals in today's market for them. <laughs> would you say having the Liam Neeson of realtors in your pocket, that would be a tremendous resource. Absolutely. It's at least worth a coffee. Absolutely. Great. Have you ever been to one of these events before and then you get a business card, all right? And then you've got to come up with like a glorious email. And then I think they call it, have you ever been ghosted? That sucks, right? Tell you what, if the event goes in my phone, calendar, those events happen. Have you been to uh, uh, the Common Coffee or, or Loveland Coffee or whatever good coffee place, uh, like Vagabond Cafe? Tell you what, my treat, how does your next 
Thursday look and I'm booking the appointment there and then. If she doesn't want to meet with me, she'll have to reach out to me to tell me courtesy-wise I can't meet. But I'm leaving, a, I'm leaving networking events where I've scheduled the actual meetings when I'm there. Who can see that's a much better play, just as an example. Just to help you out in more formal, let's say you're like not trying to come up with some fancy movie play. If I was you, I'd be like, look, if someone comes up to you, what do you do? Or oh, it is kind of interesting, you ask, they'll smile. And then I wouldn't go with an I statement. For some reason, my clients have said that what I do is super important. And then I'll throw quickly out a question. Would you say buying or selling a home is a pretty major decision to make in life? And they're going to go, yes. Do you see the difference just as a couple of ingredients to get them to a place where they might want to meet with you? I'll end on two words and then I'll open it up if you guys have got questions about situations you're facing. How are we doing on time? Are we all good? Like, okay. Okay. It usually ends up working out that way. <laughs> All right, like no. So I'll I'll, I'll 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 teach these two words and then I'll open it up. So if you guys are facing some situations, I can help on the spot. The sweetest little word on the planet is yet. Yet. If you've ever been in a meeting and you're like, oh my god, like it's nail biting. I'm about to ask to put the business. This word yet will make it a lot easier. I actually technically use it on John earlier. Have you learned anything from me yet? He goes, yes, I have. All right. If you are halfway through a meeting with someone. Just ask them, have you heard everything you need to hear from me yet to feel confident to have me list your home? And if they say yes, you can get to say terrific. The next step is very simple. And what you won't do is overshare now, all right? Here's what makes the word yet so sweet. They can say no to you and you still get to continue your dialogue. No, do you know what? That's still terrific. What specifically would be what you want to hear so that you can feel that sense of confidence so it doesn't end your dialogue. The other area is for your self-talk, right? Kimberly and I were talking a lot today, all right? Our self-talk, we talk more to ourselves than anybody else. If you say, I've not reached my goals to 2023, that's a negative statement. Add the word yet on the end of that and see how immediately your psyche changes as a result of adding that word yet. For any of you in relationships, no one likes the word but, all right, in an argument. So just a small one, just substitute the word but for the word yet you'll never upset them because no one yet doesn't offend anybody. And now I'm going to end the session on the most powerful word in sales. Hands down, the most powerful word in sales that you want to consciously use when you're going to ask someone for business. You can typically only do this at the end of your meeting with someone, right? But that word is believe, believe. Noah Harris even bought me a Ted Lasso sticker for my phone that says believe on it, right? Here's why. Everyone in the world will do what they believe. When they actually believe it, they will do it. They'll find a way all right, to do, it, to do whatever it is. So, And think about college. I went to a college called Rollins College. It's like 300 grand today for a liberal arts education. People are going there. Why? Because they believe when they go there, they're going to be set up for life. People go to a place of worship every week for their entire lives based on belief. Right? So you want to consciously ask someone, do you believe? So watch this, show, just show of hands, who believes that with, if you had me as a resource that you believe I would help you get listings in life, all right? Show, raise your hand nice and high and look around if you actually believe that. If you're a client, you're already, all right, like, so watch this. If you raise your hands, do you like to be around people when they say they believe something, they do something about it? Is that a natural thought? Okay, so when I stick my cell phone number up, what's an action that you should take? Taking a picture and writing down. What's another action that other people have done? text you who I agree with you who agrees with her and now I say I agree with you all right and we have some fun and then what happens is that's when my phone just starts blowing up with text messages from numbers that I don't recognize and I'll be like oh 864 oh 803 and then I call I'm just being up front with you I teach when I sell I teach and when I teach I sell and I teach you the things that you want to do so that you can get the actions and the outcomes from others from that standpoint so you're aware, because I'm doing this tour, this tour was kind of like my way of giving my girlfriend the ability to have quality time with her kids, and I got out of the house, so to speak, all right? So the smiley face has stuck around. Your, Kimberly, if you want to show the hat, I gave you a senior, and uh, this is not a hat, it's a symbol, all right? Uh, oh, Mike's got his, okay? Only my smile. This is where I help clients for life. They get me, that anytime you have to think more than two minutes how about how to communicate something, doesn't matter, time, day, year, you can reach out to me. I always give, my, I give myself 24 hours. It's usually pretty 
immediate, right? Because I don't bring on a ton. It's, it's my client. My coaching is just me. I'm not like, I don't have any apprentices of me running around or anything of that nature. What I've done, I've created, this is, I was meant to bring my dog Bruce, but with the accommodations I was doing, all right, but I end up bringing lingo. I should have had lingo in the uh, uh, scenario. But I'm doing, I'm doing a special for this tour. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I've, I've created for all different budgets, basically, on how to help you guys out going forward in life. So um, before I open it up to questions, who would think it was cool if I read your mind in this room? All right, Camille, we're going to go for this. All right. I don't know why a deck of playing cards. All right. Could be because I'm looking at the guy's shirt behind you, but like, okay. So um, not a card trick. All right. But think of a pack of cards. We open them up. You're just going to say your answers really fast so we can hear you without jumping ahead. But you've got to go mega quick. Can't breathe, hesitate. Just go real fast without jumping ahead. So we open up the deck. We're going to play a game. So we take the jokers out immediately. All right. Going real fast without jumping ahead. Uh, very fit, quick. You've got two colors. You've got black, you've got red. Pick one. Quick. Wow. The red left over. You've got hearts, you've got diamonds. Quick. Heart. The diamonds left over. You've got numbers, you've got face. face. Of the face, you've got the jack, the queen, the king. Queen. Jack and king left. Pick one. Jack. So we're left with the king of diamonds. All right. So I get out of my wallet and then I pull out. No way. <laughs> no way. All right. Now that's not a trick. All right. Now he took me through the paces to get there. Sometimes I'll get people going. Red, diamonds, face, king, and then I pull it out, and it's even more of a, oh. it's not a trick. Why? It means I'm focused on the outcome before I even start the interaction. Do you understand? It's got, everything you do has got to be with ethics integrity. You're not holding a gun someone's head saying, I want to buy your house. But every interaction you go into, most of the time you're not thinking of the outcome before you go into it, and that's why you get lost, and that's why you're not getting the deals that you want. That's just my fun way of teaching outcome. Thanks for being a good sport there. Yeah. All right, cheers. And by the way, that's the only card I carry in my wallet, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> like, like, people have seen me do that before. Um, any questions, any challenges you guys are facing? I'm here to, I can help any of you out here whilst I'm here with regards to that. I don't know if you need me to do that okay, for you, too. Go ahead. So So you're always replacing the one. And I noticed that you said why why? And I didn't find I don't find it offensive. It's just something I've been like for a while. So it'd be like, what about X? Is it important to you versus Y? Okay, so so watch this. If someone if in Florida relatives, a lot of New Yorkers move down. So like if if you know it, you can offend a New Yorker sometimes very easily in those components. I'm never going to teach, look, I teach asking questions controls the conversation. I'm never going to teach you guys to become politicians where you never answer the question, where it makes it irritating to answer a question. If someone came to my truck dealership and goes, uh, do you have a gray truck on the lot? All right. I know I'm an amateur. If I say, yes, come right this way, we've got one three rows back, all right? Because that's logic. If I go, yes, we do, just out of curiosity, why gray? All right, they can now tell me, oh, my grandfather had one and my brother and I learned how to drive in it and I'm gathering all, oh, does this truck remind you of your grandfather's truck? That's gathering information. I don't concentrate so much on the what, why. It's interesting. We get programmed to think certain things. You've been programmed, like asking why. I don't care about the word for words that you use. There are certain words you, you don't want to use and you remove from your vocab, like the words I want, for instance. My goal is if you just take away this outcome, outcome, it'll elevate your chances of getting the outcome that you want. It's like breathing in a gym. You'll do more sets when you breathe in between a rep than if you try and hold your breath as you're going, which some of us do. So, all right, I wouldn't worry so much about the what or the, the, the why thing. I will tell you this, though. When someone does something out of order to you, right, a friend does something out of order to you, what's the first question that you're going to ask them? When someone does something really out of order to you, yeah, what's the first question? How would you do that? That's a terrible question. That's an example of a terrible question because you're not going to feel better once they start telling you the outcome. You're, if you say this, hey, why shouldn't you have done that? All of a sudden, you're going to see their eyes going ahead and they're going to start thinking. Now they're going to start sharing with you. And now you look, Ruben, I know you're, you're, and Mike, 
you, you guys are leaders of people. You host meetings, all right? I teach a lot of leaders how to facilitate a meeting. You don't want to have to tell people, guys, cell phones off. Guys, turn your cameras on. Guys, do this. They don't. So all I would do is what's called garnering understanding. No one likes being sold. But if you put them into your shoes, they won't feel sold. And it's four glorious words, if you were me. I'll just go, hey, guys, if you were me up here, would you want to leave everyone feel, if you were me, would you want to deliver great content and have everyone reach out to you being like, Jamie, that was amazing. I need your help. I didn't say I want. I put you in my shoes. Hey, guys, if you were me, would you want everyone to get the most out of their year as a group? Yes. What are some things you guys could do to achieve that? Right. If you were me, would you, what is one way that I couldn't, if they don't come up with, what's one way I can know if there's, good engagement or I can sit like, you know, what would that be? Turn the cameras on. I agree with you. You're, you're basically facilitating more than di dictating to them things that should make logical sense, but you want to get group buying from people. You're going to hire people that might not be a good cultural fit, but you want that person to stick out like a sore thumb very quickly in that scenario. Does it make a leader out of order that they want a camera on so people can see their faces? No. The right people are going to go, no. I don't have a signed agreement. You just get a smiley face after. If you're a Kimberly, you get three smiley faces. But like, if you, I don't do any signed agreement. If a client, potential client said, there's no signed agreement, I'll be like, we're probably not a good fit. If I have to be dressed a certain way, like, watch this. Who agrees with me that appearance can matter, but the content of the value of the content in my mouth is way more important? Okay, great. We can work together. If you say appearance, I'm like, you're just screaming in my head. We are not. You do not want to bring on everyone into life, but hopefully that helps. I wouldn't focus on the why or the what. I think it's more, you can stutter. There's only one word in sales you can't be. One. Desperate. Like, if I make a comment like this, let's just see how believable. I don't care whether you come on board as a client or not. Like, do it, don't do it. I'm not going to change my life over bringing on. I, I want good clients. I want quality people. I'm going to hold your hand for my life, and you won't know. There is not one element of justice I can do in what I deliver to someone by talking about it up here. That gets proven over time, right? I will show you vulnerabilities become one of the most sexiest thing in the world. We actually want to go with people where they, their life hasn't been like this, and they've face trials tribulations in like i went to, i took yesenia mike and lingo out for dinner last night and lingo's going through he's 25 and he's going through this i've had two successful years but i'm like going through some trials and i just i said I, rather than me say i'm like hey mike you're saying you face any trials or tribulations recently like they're like oh my god tons and then mike's like i've done this business i've done this business i've done this business do you see all right but it's not nice being around. We, we had a discussion about, I, I didn't know the term narcissist until I started dating my girlfriend who's ex-husband. You know, it, like it has these 10, if you run into people where they say they've got everything figured out, I say run away from that person. Does that make sense? So don't worry. No one should be worrying about word for word. Can, you can stutter or stumble your way through it. In fact, the video text, I didn't show this slide because it's a Coldwell Banker client for the slide, but I would encourage you rather than doing a text, do a video text. You've probably been given advice, but when you're doing the video text, don't start, hi, I'm so-and-so with EXP, all right? Be like, do you know what? It's very interesting. Whenever I do these videos, I always get people reaching out to me. You've now planted a seed. This is what happens when people do this, all right? And then you'll be like, you'll probably appreciate, I'm going to, I might stutter and stumble because I'm doing this in one take. If you've ever had to do a video before, what am I doing? I'm humanizing myself to the person in front of me. I have one client with, uh, well, she's just joined Compass. She was with EXP, but she has a baby, Oliver. I said, have the baby. I don't care if it's burping or whatever, spitting up on you. Have that and be like, is it nice to know that there's a human being behind your search? All right. And Ruben's like, yes, you're making it a question. You're not making it as a statement. Anytime you feel like making a statement, transition it into a question, you're going to get more buy-in from the other person. That's why if you want to get a response on the phone, you don't say, I would like to meet you. That's a statement. You throw it into a question of benefit for the other person. Was that helpful? I felt good about sharing that stuff there. All right. Good.
and you can stutter you, you you can actually stumble and get to a place where you're like getting back on track hold on a minute i realized that the hey given that i just heard that is it not the best one is just say is it natural to have this thought it's part of report hey is it not is it natural for me to let's say i want to get back is it natural for, for me to think that some of you should have texted me by now is that a natural thought the right yes great what i'm not doing is saying guys like i want you to do this da, da, da. is it a natural thought look and we're not going to go into every story but when you get an objection you're better off going into multiple choice questions or story time someone says we're going to hold off we think the market's going to crash amateur move why do you think that now you're getting them ability just like you don't have a crystal ball on what that's going to happen let alone them but you're asking them what gives you that impression now they get an ability i would say I get it. Hey, quick question. Are you looking to like flip this house like kind of Camille, like where you like buy it, rehab it and sell it? Or are you looking to live in it for a while? They're going to say, the right person is going to say, live in it for a while. What have I done? I started steering the conversation. Then I thought, can you see where the price is irrelevant? They might look perplexed. I'm like, the market does this, right? And then it does this. Have you ever noticed the next up is always higher than the last one? Yeah. So when do you really think you should be buying? Right now, I'm like, I agree with you. It's a different conversation than what most realtors are having out there in those moments. Objections are going to happen. There's no such thing as a laydown is perfect when you've asked the right questions in the leader. You've built the rapport, you have evoked the emotion, and you have a seamless call to action. Some of you, you've got to ask a more specific question to get the outcome. I'll give you a wax on, wax off moment. I want my kids to clean their rooms, make their beds. All right. They don't want to be told to do that. If I say, kids, do you like it when I'm happy? They might say, yes, please, God. If I say, if I say, what could you be doing right now that make me happy? It's too broad base of a question because they might say, give you a hug. And I'm like, well, you, yeah, you're right. That would make me happy, but that's not what I was looking for. So I get more specific. Kids, what could you be doing around the house that would make me happy? And then they say, cleaning our rooms, making our beds. Some of you with your clients, you need to get more specific on the question of like why they should be working with you specifically rather than just broad based real estate. A big one. How many here? I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my husband. And you're asking, when will I hear back from you? Think about that. You're asking a question. When will I hear back from you? Have you ever had someone say three weeks, four weeks, and you're scratching your head thinking, what kind of ma marriage? are you in that takes three weeks of work? does you does your wife drive a truck you know like what's going on so i get more specific hey that's great happy wife happy life right look typically people in your shoes they'll speak tonight and i'll hear back from them by tomorrow what kind of time frame and then they're gonna say by tomorrow i on purpose with john tried to ask do uh, before i asked him the what question i said do you have kids why because if I then sublimely plant, some people say leave a legacy. How much value do people place on leaving a legacy? Hi, I'm starting that I'm sublimely planting. Some people, when they join EXP, they love the fact that they, they can do this. Just out of curiosity, what would one thing be that you would see a value in joining EXP? Oh my God, I love that. Oh, interesting. Like you've actually planted what you want them to say and they don't even realize it. Does that make sense? Like you, it's called group psychology. People, no one wants to feel like a sucker. None of you guys, if you call me or text me, should feel like a sucker. Why? Because I've got one, two, three, four clients here. There's no, but if you are leaving an impression in someone in front of someone, you're not doing a lot of business or you don't have a lot of clients, they're gonna feel that scenario. But that's why simply saying the words my clients have said, you're planting in your head their head. This person has people that trust them when it comes to X, Y, Z. Camille in the real estate investing, if you say, do you know what? I've done this so, so many times and da, da, da. Right? Would you believe I'm a professional? The second they say yes to you, they're now subliminally being like, I should probably listen to this person because they've done it a number of times. Any other questions? I'm in the right. I've got to talk tonight to Pines and Properties. So it's from, through Jason Coleman in, uh, Greensboro. So I, I know it's not the longest drive and that's not till six. So when I say I'm under no, like I think Mike can attest and Kimberly can attest, I don't show up, blow up, leave. All right. I, I, I kind of, I treat it like the fun uncle. I said, I, I do the fun uncle. I've been asked, do an event. I'm like, the logistics wise, I'd rather just show up, have a fun time, give everyone fun. 
<laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, my, I, I would like of course. to hear maybe something that you guys are still working on, something new, something you wrote down, something you're not doing now. So maybe if you don't have a question, maybe something you learned here today. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Sometimes usually people with Cobalt Bank are saying, Jamie, it's just a fresh take because we're usually getting scripts given to us by people who do what you do or things of that nature. Go ahead, mate. No, it's super late, but I think um, for me, um, we, I kind of knew this, but the way you mapped it out, it's always having the end in mind. Um, in those situations, talking to a client, talking to someone, I know what I want, but it's not mapping out kind of in my mind where that, and knowing that I start continuously remembering that's the goal at the end of the conversation. That just kind of, it's like one of those, that should have been in the back of my mind already. Yeah. By the way, what's your name? Raul. Raul, Raul just used the word want, for example, an extra lesson. No one in life will do what they need to do. Everyone needs to go to a gym. Everyone needs to eat healthy. They don't, all right? But everyone in life will always do what they want. So you just have to find out what they want. If you find out what someone wants and they value it, the price will be irrelevant. So you need to, in your communication, focus on what they want. I wanted to feel like a man. The price of the truck is irrelevant. Someone wants my services. My price point, I promise you, has been proven. It's irrelevant. How much value do you place on being better in communication? All of you, high, right? Some people said it's priceless. I could plant, like, you know, what value? It's, I, I, can be, I, I can be any price point. You can be any house that someone wants, and you're being, as long as they want it, you're being ethical. But thank you for sharing. Go ahead, what's something you took out? Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, you actually want the person talking and talking and talking. Here's the deal, though. It's the caliber of the questions you're asking as to what they're talking and talking and talking about. All right? Like, and watch this. If you're asking someone, do you have any questions for me? All right? That's a very broad base. All right? You could be going through the contract. All right? Do you have any questions for me? Yeah. Where were you born? Like, or something. And now you're going off on a complete tangent, but you asked the question. So some of you are missing the word about at the end of that. Do you have any questions specifically about anything I just went through? And here's what they're nine times out of 10 going to say. No, you explain that very clearly. I've had people who do admin at EXP. We're like, Jamie, you've just ended half an hour of unnecessary conversation between myself and people I'm bringing on purely by using the word about. Look, again, I, I've got, so, there's, so many things that you can do as a realtor that help you steer that conversation. The more specific, if you're asking a specific question to the outcome that's ideal for you, you want that person talking. John said something, it didn't go on enough. I just said, can you elaborate on that for me? Tell me more about that because I want them, you want the person talking. It's an emotional sale. And the more you get them talking and the more you listen, the more you get to leverage back that they're, that it's like my daughter. If she listens to me say why, have, like she goes, I'm confused because you just shared all these things that you want safety. All right. It's, it's like, it's a mute point. Like she's getting a cell phone. There's no, like your clients, that information they're sharing with you should help you so that if they ever come up with an objection, it's the easiest thing. Watch this. I get objection. Here's an objection I get. Jamie, I'm going to do this. I'm just not going to do it right now. Ever heard that before? I'm like, Look, just entertain me. Who, Ruben, who is someone that you admire who's really successful that I would have heard of? Who? Ed Milet. Ed Milet. Yep. Okay. Yeah, of course. No, very terrific. Have you ever read the book or heard of the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Right. In that book, it teaches this principle. Like, you know, I didn't come up with it, but it seems to me. Don't reinvent the wheel. If you go out there and you find someone successful and you copy their values, their habits, you'll likely have great success. Does that make logical sense to you? Then I go, could you ever imagine Ed Milet in front of me going, Jamie, I love you. I value it. I believe you can help me tremendously. Could you ever imagine Ed Milet in the next sentence going, eh, I'll wait till later? Would he ever say, I'll wait till later to do it? No. So when should you be doing this? I agree with you. It doesn't matter what the, but here's what I didn't do. What do you mean you're going to wait to do it? Successful people don't wait to do stuff. 
I'm asking him on purpose who he admires. He's the one who has to go to sleep at night being like, I am, I'm speaking shit to you. I don't, I, I am not being, uh, I have to go to sleep at night or try and sleep at night knowing that the words I'm saying are not congruent with the person that I'm looking to be. I don't lose any sleep. I'm like, what would that person do? But it's being able to overcome those, when those moments happen, it's called story time. If Ruben was the kind of coach, he's not thankfully, but where he's like, Jamie, I've paid thousands of dollars in my life to learn the stuff that you teach and I teach my agents these things. I'm going to come up with a story that's still going to get me in front of his agents. And I'll be like, you know what? You remind me when I was growing up. Whenever I start a story, you remind me. You remind me when I go, I played soccer. Did you do any sports growing up? Yes. What sports? Baseball. Baseball. My dad was a big influence in my life in my sports. He came to every practice, every game. Did your dad, was he in the, <laughs> no? Okay. I don't know if this has ever happened for you, but like this is what happened for me. I'd get in the car after a practice and I'm like, oh my God, dad, the coach taught me the most amazing thing today. And then my dad would literally look like he wanted to pull his hair out. He goes, Jamie, I've been telling you this for months, all right? And then here's what Ruben would say. Do you know what? I think my team could do with hearing it from a different source. I'm like, yeah, one with a British accent. And it literally, <laughs> that's how, like if someone tells me it's, not about always having an answer, but it's about trying to have an answer in those moments so you can steer it into a place because you're going to get objections, but you're either going to go multiple choice or you're going to go stories because stories change the emotion of the person in front of you. All of you have your Ed Myler in your head, all right? And all of you, when do successful people take action? Now, do you know some people, when they answer me, when they're comfortable, I'm like, yeah, you're just telling me we're not going to be a good fit. That's okay. I don't read that book. Uh, hopefully, you're learning as I'm teaching you this stuff, guys. Like, I'm, I'm Every time I share something I do, it's aimed as a lesson for you to understand. Oh, that was interesting. But if you're asking, if someone's saying we're going to hold off, and you're asking why, all right, in that moment, you're not helping yourself. It's not going to help you steer that. Some of you, like, look, who's been in a relationship before the one that you are in now? Have you ever heard of the term red flags? Okay. Some of you are not having consultations, the initial consultation with a buyer to eradicate the red flags. Because when you go on a date with someone new, you're bringing up these are my non-negotiables very quickly because you don't want to wait six months. But some of you with your buyers, you're waiting for the non-negotiable. We're going to sleep on it. You could have eradicated that happening at the beginning. You could eradicate them sending you the text objection and then you're trying to overcome objections. Text, 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 text. I don't care what communication coach. You could have communication God in your life and you're not going to overcome objections. Text, 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 or email, 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 email. Look at this email they just sent me. How would you overcome that? You're not going to send something glorious in a message that's going to suddenly have them overcoming it. What you can do is sell them on getting on a phone call with you. Different outcome. So I mean, that, that seemed to resonate. Was that fun, guys? Was it good? Like, yeah. cool. Thank you for having me, awesome. guys. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'm going to have to go back and watch this as a recording. So it is recorded and read. Yeah. 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 Yeah.